Now, I love fantasy worlds, but I would not want to live in the world of these rebel waves. This is way too dangerous, and I would not make a good pirate because I have a terrifying fear of water. I'm Sarah Rash, author of Snow Like Ashes and These Rebel Waves. These Rebel Waves is about a pirate, an ex-soldier, and a prince all fighting to survive in a world with deadly botanical magic and even deadlier religion. And now I'm going to reveal to you some of my top fantasy worlds and whether or not I'd want to live in them. The first fantasy world is Gilangaria from Sharon Shin's 12 Houses series. And if you follow me on social media at all, it will not be surprising that I mentioned Sharon Shin. I am obsessed with her and her books, but especially this series. It was the first series I read in the adult high fantasy genre that really showed me what you could do with thoughtful, intricate world building. And would I live there? Yes, I would move there like yesterday. <laughs> A part of the reason that this world is so encompassing is that all the characters within this world love being there. You can just tell that they're having fun, that they are loyal to the different places that they're from, and that kind of loyalty is just very tantalizing. The next one is New York City from Lisa Maxwell's The Last Magician. So I am an utter sucker for worlds that run parallel to ours and provide magical explanations for obscure things, and add in the fact that Lisa parallels the struggles of turn-of-the-century New York's immigration problems within her magical world, and I'm just, sign me up. Would I live there? No, <laughs> unless my magic power was to create indoor plumbing, I'd rather read about it. <laughs> what I love most about the world of Warehouse 13 is that it says that emotion is enough to create magic and that sheer willpower can imbue objects with fantastical elements. Would I live there? Yes, <laughs> I would be the best warehouse agent and it would be a much nicer world to live in if magic was the culprit, not humans. The next world is the Zodiac Galaxy from Romina Russell's Zodiac series. The Zodiac series does not mess around. There are 13 different cultures within this one world and they all correspond to different Zodiac traits and they all take those traits and just spiral out with them. It is truly respectable what Russell did with this world. Would I live there? Yes, I would love to just be a tourist and get to see 13 different cultures all built around the Zodiac, but I gotta spend time with my people, the Virgos. What I love most about Westworld is how the town of Sweetwater and its surrounding environment depicts the worst traits of humanity and forces people to confront their own morality within just this one little setting. It's really fascinating. Would I live there? No, way too violent. Or am I only programmed to say it's violent? The next world is the world of Storybrooke from Once Upon a Time. So in Once Upon a Time, there is a seemingly never ending stream of fairy tale worlds that they all mesh together and add their own unique spins on, but there are enough familiar elements to keep you grounded in the story. And that delicate balance is really, really admirable. Would I live there? Yes, if I could pick when and where and not have to be involved in any of the dangerous plots. Last but not least is the world of Avatar The Last Airbender. And again, if you followed me online for any amount of time, it's not at all surprising that this is my ultimate favorite fantasy world. I talk about this all the time. It's such a simple concept, a world built on four elements. Like that's literally the whole pitch, but the creators took it to such an extreme in-depth tantalizingly in-depth lengths. Like the Fire Nation, the food, the culture, the colors, everything in like the Water Tribe, the Earth Kingdom, the Air Nomads, everything is taken to the absolute extreme down to every tiny detail. And those details are just suck you in. Would I live there? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Fire Nation.